God, that you would help us, Lord, to honor you, to glorify you, to lift you up. Lord, we praise you. We love you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you would release your glory in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we pray, Lord, that your anointing would be upon every singer, every musician. God, that you would have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we praise you and love you. Church, let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah.
one who knows every star by name. Yeah. The one who knows how many grains of sand are in the ocean. Yeah. Knows our name. Yeah. He knows the sound of our voice. Amen. How great it is. Thank you, Lord. You go in a room with a hundred kids. And if my daughter or my son speaks my name, I know it's them. Because yeah. yeah. they're mine. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But in a world of billions of people, billions, when the redeemed cry out, Hallelujah. he says, that's what I'm
you feel really good. It's nice that you want it. We're so glad that you want it. It all makes us feel so, so very, very welcome. I also want to thank you for your great hospitality. We're going to enjoy the goodie basket. That was a nice, an unexpected, but very, very welcome. Well received gift. We appreciate that. And nice accommodations. And, uh, I want to thank the church also in prayers and for your support for world missions in general and for the mission in the Philippines. We appreciate uh, you so very, very much. When it comes to missions, I think it's important to understand that we are partners. Right. Amen. Right. Uh, there's an old expression that says some give by going and others go by giving. 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 You, you heard that one? Uh huh. Some give by going, others go by giving. Yeah. giving. It's not chapter and verse out of the Bible, but it, it actually is biblical in, in its essence because the Bible talks about the church being a body composed of many members, not all having the same office, yeah. not all having the same function. Right. Amen. So we appreciate, even though we're part of a wonderful team. Amen. And uh, it's absolutely true that we can't go without your help. But you know something? There's another side of that coin. You can't go without our help. That's right. Yeah. right. Yeah. True. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's and right. We all have a, 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 a calling to take the gospel to the whole world, don't we? Mm -hmm. right? the gospel Amen. The, the, we have a calling to take the gospel to preach to every creature. Um, you may not be equipped or called to go to somebody, someplace like Asia. But God did call us and, and, and to prepare us for such a work. But we can't go without, without your help. Right. But the way that you can go is by supporting those in whom you have the call. So Amen. if you do your part, we'll do our best to do our part. All right. Amen. And I'm confident that we, it, when God's with us, Amen. because he's with us, we're going to do the job. Amen. 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 It's also wonderful today to have my uh, Beautiful partner and uh, my wife with me today. Well, same person, my partner and my wife. I'd like her to come and greet you and uh, <coughs> share with you whatever God's put on our heart. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord.
to that person. Ooh, come on. That's so good. Come on. Stay focused and get our lives right because God is coming so soon, probably sooner than we think. Yeah. So let's be ready. And I'm challenging you today. Go out and during this year, it's the beginning of the year. You have a whole year. Try to win one soul. Right. right. And, and root them and ground them. Get them established. Get them good in, in, in the church. Then say, okay, I rooted and grounded you. It's your turn next year. Right. And we're still here. And say, I want to root you and ground you. And you and your turn to run somebody. And, and you go off and win somebody else. Right. By no time, you'll be outgrown in this church. Right. You'll right. be meeting a new church. So I'm challenging you. And I hope you accept that challenge Jesus to reach one this year. God bless you. Love you all.
and uh, we do give God all the glory and all the honor. Uh, it's, a, it's a, an amazing thing to have a missionary call. Um, I, I don't suppose there's anything quite like it, uh, although a pastor certainly feels, uh, uh, I think, very much the same way about his city. Um, but when you're called to be a missionary, God has given you a responsibility or a sense of responsibility to reach an entire nation. So you take what a pastor feels and just multiply it. Um, and uh, by so many times, you might get a sense of what uh, we begin to feel when we realize we're called to reach a nation of 100 million souls. So what do you do? Um, it, you know, there's a lot of buildup um, when, you, when, when you're uh, preparing to become a missionary. It took us actually several years. We started... Uh, on, on that journey in 2006, and we didn't, uh, we didn't enter the, the country that God called us until 2009. During that period, we're thinking, you know, there's, not, you know, uh, there's just a lot of building, a lot of excitement, anticipation, and uh, you're wondering how it's going to be. You know you're going to have to learn the language and culture in different ways, and, uh, and so you're trying to adjust and prepare. Uh, there's nothing that can really prepare you for that day when you finally arrive with four suitcases you and your wife, and that's that's your worldly possessions as we either sold them or put everything else in, in uh, storage before we left. And we're there, I'll never forget arriving in Manila in September of 2009 uh, with my wife, and we're finally there. You know what thought was going through our mind? Now what? <laughs> we're here, now what? And so uh, we began to really just pray. And not that we hadn't been praying. Right? Of course, we've been praying for God's direction. But sure. uh, even Jesus, the Bible says, pray more earnestly. Yeah. And sometimes right. others. So we began to pray even more earnestly. Right. With really just one question on our mind. That is, God, how are we going to reach this nation? We know that you have a plan. What is it? Show us exactly what you want us to do. Be specific, God. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste effort. Uh, I only have a precious few days to get the work done. Right. And uh, I don't know why it amazes us when God answers prayers. <laughs> Amen. But uh, what amazed me, what wasn't that he answered, but it's really how rapidly he began to, to answer. It seemed like almost immediately as I began to pray that prayer, God laid three things in our heart. The first is, the way you're going to reach this nation is, number one, is you're going to need a lot of help. You're going to need to train up thousands of national workers to take the gospel to, your, to, to their own people. This is God's plan. Right. And nationals reaching nationals. They know the people. They know the language. They know the culture. They know how to move among them. And they actually know the people specifically. You know, we may see groups of people, but they, they know Jim and Paul and Sally and, and, and Mary. They know them by name. They know who they are. And uh, in a way that I, it would take years for us. So we begin to train leaders. We begin to go to our churches that we already had. And that's what established, that, that's what put in our heart the establishment of the Bible College. So number one focus is training up uh, leaders. So we've, we've trained well over a thousand, not a thousand, well over a hundred, rather, um, in our Bible school. And many of those are now pastoring churches. And uh, it, it gives us tremendous joy to see what, what they're doing for God. The second thing God laid in our heart is that we need to establish many more churches throughout the Philippines. And uh, of course, you can't really establish a church if you don't have workers right. to place them in, in that church. So that's why I believe God led us first to train. So, so we have a two-year Bible school program uh, that we've now condensed down into one very intensive year. And, uh, and the third thing God put in our heart is that the ultimate goal of every mission field is to become a missionary launching pad. And so we begin to preach that and teach that to our pastors and workers there telling them, look, uh, though you may feel needy, though you may uh, feel like it's impossible, uh, with God all things are possible. The ultimate goal is for God to take what's happening here and multiply it. Years ago, missionaries began coming here. One day, God wants us to be sending missionaries out of the Philippines to reach other nations, to establish works for other nations. Right. By the grace of God, we have actually seen all of this <clears throat> beginning to come to pass. Amen. By His grace and, and with the, the, the help of, of people back home, your prayers and, and donations, we have seen 
of the number of our churches uh, nearly quadrupled from 20 to well over 70 churches. So we shall praise God. Lord. Praise the Lord. We've seen the number of our licensed ministers go from 30 to about 130. We've seen God pour out the Holy Ghost in tremendous measure. Thousands who have been uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. More than 5,000 baptized in Jesus' name. And somebody praise shout praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen.
but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. The word peace is also sometimes used as sort of a general term, uh, meaning health, welfare, prosperity in every kind of good. For example, the expression, peace be to this house, means a good wish uh, for all those that are in that household. Go in peace is a, is a expression with a similar conclusion. Essentially, is an expression like be blessed. Mm -hmm. Peace is a, a, it's a foundational aspect, an integral part of the fruit of the Spirit. In, in Galatians 5, we read, 22, we read, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace. Peace. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. It's not that there are nine different fruits of the Spirit, but rather one grand fruit that has so many different uh, characteristics included. Peace, my, my friend, is a benefit of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. 
all looking peace. And I've got news for you. I'm cut to the chase. There's only one place. That's right. That's right. That's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Several books of the New Testament begin with, with familiar greetings that include wishes for peace. I won't read them all. Just a few Philippians 1 and 2. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 1 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace. From him which is and which was and which is to come. Amen. Romans 15.33 declares that God is the God of peace. Amen. Isaiah 45 and 7 reveals this important truth. God says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace. God is a maker of peace. Amen. It's important to understand God is the source of peace. You're not going to find peace in a bottle. You're not going to find peace from a pill. You're not going to get peace from a shot in the arm. Look at this, amen, old drug addict, amen. I'm going to tell you, amen, I look for peace in all the wrong places. What I was seeking for, amen, amen, in all that mess I got myself into, I could never find a few momentary, amen, dulling of the senses is not what God intended us to have, amen, rather afraid he's got something, amen, rich, he's got something real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Amen. Isaiah refers to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Yes. Amen. In 9 and 6, and of course the angels declared peace that wonderful night in Bethlehem. Yep. Amen. When they announced the birth of our Savior, glory to God in the highest. Yes. Jesus taught, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. He spoke of peace even in his farewell address. John 16, 33, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, uh -huh. but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Peace. And these words were spoken nearly 2,000 years ago. Come on. Yes. Amen. In the world we have tribulation. Amen. But in him, he said, in me. Amen. You can find peace. Amen. The apostles preached peace through Jesus Christ. Acts 10 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by 
Jesus Christ. He is Lord and Lord. Yes. You and I, as members of the body of Christ, have a responsibility to guard and promote peace among ourselves. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 3 says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Right? Amen. God wants his people to have peace. Amen. Yes, he does. He wants you to have peace. He does. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, perhaps my wife's favorite verse in the Bible. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say yes. the Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Peace. Peace. And not of evil to give you an expected end. Amen. God has thoughts of peace for you and I. Amen. Amen. Not turmoil. That's right. Amen. Not, 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 not worry. Amen. Not anxiety. Right. But Amen. peace. Yeah. And Amen. Comfort. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it is sad that God sometimes, perhaps oftentimes, cannot grant the peace that He wishes to give us. Due to sin. Right. Stop complaining to you today. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's time, I think, with the ministry to get back to the business of just telling them like it is. Come on. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Isaiah 48. God is saying to the prophet, if he just listened to me, yep. you would have peace like a river. Yeah. Right? Amen. Yeah. But you got you're in turmoil. You're in crisis. Why? Because you hardened your heart. Right. Along with your head. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got stuck. In Isaiah 57 to 21, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Mm -hmm. Don't expect to find the peace of God if you're not willing for him to clean your life up. Yeah, right. yeah. If, you, if you insist on continuing and pursuing evil, there's no promise of peace for you. Another major cause for us lacking peace relates to our own flesh. How many knows who are the Christian's enemies? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's not your neighbor. All right. It's not man. The rest of God is uh -huh. supposed to Amen. It's ourselves. Amen. If you have three enemies, one is the devil. And thank God he's under our feet sometimes. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. The other is this world and its system. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. But the third, <clears throat> perhaps the most pernicious, is our own <coughs> flesh. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts which war in your members? In other words, isn't it all this conflict and all the turmoil that we sometimes find ourselves in the midst among us? Isn't it really just a byproduct of your flesh? Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sometimes the reason we don't have peace Come on. Come on. Come on. I pastored for many years prior to being on the mission field. And, um, I realize now, I realize even then, that there are some things it's, it's harder for, for a pastor to preach than it is for a visiting preacher. Amen. 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 So, Amen. I, I hope I'm being a help to the man of God here today. <laughs> Amen. The beautiful thing about being an evangelist is uh, we can kind of hit and run. But we're only telling you, but we're here to support your pastor. We're only saying, you know, what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Because we want to see you all in heaven. Right. We want to see your life blessed. We want to see you enjoy every benefit that God has available for you. When it comes to, to, to our enemies, often our flesh is the biggest one we need to get yes. under control. Yes. And once again, the only real and lasting peace you'll ever find in this world 
is the peace that Jesus gives. Listen to these beautiful words. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, I, I've got to considering this, this, this verse today. I wonder, uh, what kind of peace can the world give? And as I begin to look at it, amen, Jesus never really said that the world gives peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace... I give unto you, not as the world giveth. The world gives you something. Right. That's right. The world's going to give you something. Yeah. But he never really said the world gives you any kind That's of right. real peace. Right. And what, what I like to tell you today is the world's got invitations. Right. right. It's got distractions, Sister yeah. Amy. Yep. Amen. There, there, there are temporary cessations of hostilities. You know, sometimes we'll lay down our arms and call the truth. But it seems like enemies are going to be enemies. You know, sooner or later, those conflicts are going to flare up again. Alcohol, drugs, and, 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 and all, of the, all, all this world's entertainment. It, it can dull the mind. It can distract our, our thinking. It can, it can uh, maybe tickle us or, or lift our spirits for a moment. But you know that none of that lasts but for, for a season. Right. right. Amen. Amen. We might turn to the watch a movie, movie or participate in some other mindless distraction, but honestly, amen, the world has nothing, amen, to give you that represents true peace. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. The world, why? Not? Because the world doesn't make it. That's right. The world can't produce it. Right. The Bible is very plain. God Himself is the author, the producer of peace. Yes. God and God alone is Come the on. only right. source right. of peace. Yes.
makes us an enemy of God. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but the spirit, to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but it doesn't stop there. To be carnally minded means dead. That's bad enough. He goes on to make me more pointed when he says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's a fancy word which means the carnal mind is God's enemy. That's right. Amen. So we can't really find peace with God until we find a solution to the fact that in our sinful nature, we're God's enemy. Right. Right. The carnal mind, of course, loves pleasure, loves sin, loves comfort. Doesn't want to deal with eternal realities. Come on. Amen. But all that kind of thinking. It's contrary. Put you on the wrong side. It's contrary to God. Amen. Friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. James 4 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Yeah. He's not talking about being a friend with a neighbor who's not saved. The word is cosmos, which in the Greek refers to the system of the world of which Satan is the principle. Right. If you're a friend of that system, you are the enemy of God. Right. Amen. But there's good news. You have to lay, the, lay out the facts, yeah. amen, <clears throat> before the good news can actually make his full impact. Romans chapter 5, beginning at 6, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Yes, for scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet for adventure for the good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved. beautiful essence of this chapter, this passage, is telling us that our sin made us enemies of God. That Jesus not only made a truce, now he did much more than make a truce. He, he brought peace in the situation. All right. Amen. He brought those that were once at odds into perfect relationships. That's what he did for his work on the cross. Yes, sir. That's right. So when you find peace with God, when you find salvation in Jesus Christ, you no longer, you no longer are God's enemy. As a matter of fact, he refers to you as his friends. Right. Right. He refers to you as his brother. Right. Right. As his sister. Yeah. Amen. You were once aliens, but now you're in the family of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You are heirs. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. Heirs of all of heaven's blessings. Amen. Because of what Jesus did for us. So the bottom line is you're either with God or you're against Him. There is no neutral territory. There's no demilitarized zone. You are either, amen, in the family of God or you're an alien. You are either with God him or you are against him. You are either a friend of God or you are the enemy of God. You are either going to have peace amen, like this world cannot give or you are going to have turmoil amen, right. and conflict that will shoot at your speed. Amen. So the question is today, are you a friend of the world? Or are you a friend of God? Let's read another passage. Ephesians chapter 2, 12 through 17. 
that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our what? Peace. He is our peace, who have made both one. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for the make of himself of twain one new man. So here he's primarily talking about the, the dichotomy between the Jews and the Gentiles. Right. That Jesus broke down the partition walls right. and he's making it. He's made us all one body for him. But it doesn't stop there. So may the peace, he says. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the Christ, uh, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And catch this last part. And he came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. Amen. The message of Jesus Christ. Is a message of peace. Yes. The work that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary was to bring you and I to a place of peace with God. And that ought to cause us Amen. To Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So number one, we've got to quit being God's enemy. Number two, we need to realize fully that peace comes only through faith in Jesus Christ, Romans 5 and 1, says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you've got to believe in the work that Jesus did on the cross. You believe and understand that what he did was to bring you to a place of reconciliation with the other. Psalms 119, 165 gives us gives us some more insight. It says, Great peace have they which love thy law, right. mm -hmm. and nothing shall offend them. <laughs> this, is, this is revealing to us that there is peace in knowing the word of God right. and yes. falling in love with it. Right. 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 Amen. You need peace? Pick up your Bible and read it. Yeah. 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 And then make up your mind that you're going to follow what it says. Amen. Jesus' words are a great source of peace. He said, These things have I spoken unto you, John 16, 33, that in me you might have peace. Right. In the world you, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Praise God. So the word of God is a tremendous source of peace. Amen. Number four on my list of how to find peace. I'm going to go back to our opening scripture. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Reads, be careful for nothing. Now that's old English. Um, helps sometimes to get the word study tools out and, and, and dig into this. And what, what it really is saying, the word is the rephrase it in modern vernacular, is don't be anxious. About anything. Yeah, right. 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 Amen. Don't allow anxiety to have a place in your life. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now I, I might be preaching myself. I just bear my soul. Amen. Just a little bit. But these last couple months, I have felt more anxiety than I can remember. Yeah. Amen. And then, and then yeah. in my life. So maybe this Bible study is just for me. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I wonder how in the world can we reach a place where we have no anxiety? Amen. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Is that possible? Amen. I want to tell you, child of God, it is possible. Amen. It is. And it gives us the answer. The methodology. He says, but in everything by what? Prayer. Prayer. But in everything by prayer. 
Prayer. But in everything, by prayer. Friend, there's no substitute for prayer. No, no. Come on. If you find yourself being anxious, the number one answer is prayer. Right. Amen. Except in everything, pray. Yeah. Everything that's causing you anxiety, take it to God in prayer. It's just uh -huh. in prayer. Jesus promised never to leave you. 
Right. Amen. You will extend that peace that passes all understanding. Peace when you shouldn't have peace. Peace when it doesn't make any sense for you to feel peace. Peace when you're already falling apart and you have, you have the comfort because you realize you, you don't really know what the future holds, but you know who holds the future. Right. And, right. and you are in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, This peace shall. There's no equivocation. There's no hesitation. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you got problems, you lack peace today. Amen. You're battling anxiety. The answer is in prayer. That's right. Amen. 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 Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, but your request be known to God, and you shall find peace. Amen. He said it will keep your heart, and it will keep your mind. The heart speaks of emotions. The mind speaks of the intellect. Both can be a source of, of turmoil. Sometimes we, it's all the things, that, all the thoughts that are going through our minds and trying to sort it all out. Other times it's feelings, it's emotions that, that we can't seem to get under control. But the peace of God will rule both over your heart Number five, turn it all over to Jesus. Yes, amen. First Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I had never looked up these words before, or wasn't surprised when I found out that that word care, casting all your care, is the same word we are reading in Philippians, casting all your anxieties. All right. That's exactly what it means. In fact, the English Standard Version renders it that way. Casting all your anxieties on Him. Good news, Bible. Leave all your worries with Him. God's Word. Turn all your anxiety over to God because He cares for you. You're not right. anxiety. You lack peace today. And then cast it. Toss it. Yeah. Come on. Jesus has got broad shoulders. Right. And then He's asking you. He's invited you today to cast all your cares, all your troubles, all your anxieties upon you. Yeah, right. Of course, number six, my last, last point on how to find peace. Receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stay full yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because the gift of the Holy Ghost is all about Romans 15, 13, now the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing in that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You want peace today? You're going to find it in the Holy Ghost. No. God is speaking to hearts right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you open your heart right now? Jesus wants to minister to your need right now, where you're sitting. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a big appeal that's between you and God. I'm not gonna make a big appeal for you to come to the altar because you can receive peace right where you are. But, but God is drawing right now. If you're like so many today, you recognize we need peace. Come to Jesus and you can find the peace that you need for your soul. Amen. Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace is one of the wonderful benefits that God hears when we receive the Holy Ghost. How long has it been, child of God, since you just got lost to the place of worship? Until the peace of God has been able to flow over your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, how I long for those waves of glory. Hallelujah. To sweep over our soul. How we need, amen, to be bathed in the presence of God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Tell them God the only solution. Amen. And oh, to the trouble that we're, that we're feeling, to the anxiety and the cares of life. Amen. It's more time in His presence. God's inviting us right now. Amen. Child of God. Amen. Won't you come once again into His presence? Amen. And what you long for is only found in the presence of the King. Amen. There, there came a time when, when the disciples were crossing the, the Sea of Galilee and Jesus was in the back of the boat and a storm came up. And once you know it, Jesus is asleep and his disciples, they're stressing out. They're worried because the waves are rocking their boat. And the water's coming in they're faster than they can bail it out. And they, they're, they're, they're sure, they're certain that they're going to, to get capsized and perish there. One of them runs back to the master and said, Lord, don't you care that we're, that we're going to perish? And Jesus simply rose up. You know what he did? He spoke to those waves. He spoke to the wind. And he simply said, peace be still. And immediately the wind calmed and the waves settled down. I want you to know today that same Jesus is still speaking to storms right now. You're in a storm. Somebody's in a storm right now. Jesus. All you need is for Jesus to, is, amen, to speak to you right now. I hear him say right now, peace be still. Won't you just worship him right now? Won't you just go to Jesus? The disciples went to him and said, Master, don't you see where I'm at? That's your step. If you just go to Jesus and say, Lord, do you see where I'm at? Would you please speak to my storm? Would you please calm this inner turmoil in my life? Would you please, oh God, speak peace to me? Child of God, he'll do it. He'll speak to you right now. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, I invite you right now. Come. To those of you that, that are seeking peace, you're not going to find it in the world. You're not going to find it. No amount of money is going to bring you peace. Amen. No, no, no high is going to give you peace. No, no drunken binge is going to bring you peace. No new relationship is going to bring you peace. You won't find peace in a new home. You won't find peace because you get a new car or some other new toy. Oh, you might have momentary pleasure in those things, but friend, that will all rub off and none of it will, will mean anything when it comes to eternity. The only thing that's going to matter is did you find peace with God? Can we all stand up right now? Let's stay in God's presence right now. Let's communicate with the Lord. Let's begin to pray for those that are seeking the Lord right now.